Good evening and welcome to this edition of the program, Kabiro Straight Talk. This is Kabiro FM and I'm your host, Rhodes Msonko. And our guest tonight is John Pandey, former cabinet minister and member of parliament for Blantyre City East constituency. <music> Mr. John Pandey, I welcome you to the program this evening. Thank you so much. We are meeting for the first time after you lost your parliamentary seat for Blanta City East during last year's elections. First of all, how has life been like since you lost your seat? Life has been very normal, of course, with a very small change. The small change has it that I am more freer now. I am more family man than before. That's the only difference. More, more freer? Yes. I'm much freer now because the political career demands most of your time you become more of a public figure than your own family so uh, to me it has been freer because i i now have time for my own and family but now that freedom didn't just come you didn't choose to get that freedom people voted you out of that position why do you think you failed to win those elections i have not really sat down to review or analyze the results according to the centers but uh, I can only guess that uh, it was God's time and that uh, for everything God has a reason and um, I accepted the results immediately I've moved on and um, I know God has a plan in future for me so I've taken it that way and um, I wouldn't really expect it. I couldn't really say this is the reason for what because uh, most of the people vote according to their conscience. Maybe others didn't go and by not going to vote also, you're voting. That's what they say. But to me, uh, there isn't really uh, a reason I can give for that. But maybe when I analyze in the future, when I have time for it, I could come up with a statement how I think I lost. But it is taking time for you to do that analysis, isn't it? I've, I've, I put myself on a holiday. You know, I studied politics at a very high level, as high as a cabinet. I was, um, I went into cabinet, I was first appointed by uh, late Bingo Amtarika, may he so rest in peace, in 2005. So you can see at my age, I'm only 41 now, but since 2005 I've been in cabinet. Uh, so. After so much work, I thought I should give myself a break and, but, and, and a rest. Did it surprise you when um, you heard the results that uh, you failed to win? Because Malawians described you as a model during your time when you were a member of parliament. Now came the elections, you failed. Did it surprise you, really? Was I surprised? Mm -hmm. Yes and no. Yes and no? Yeah, because w when I say yes and no, I mean, uh, yes, uh, I didn't expect a loss, just like any competitor, you know? But uh, no, I was not surprised because in, in every competition, there's a you win or you lose. But I have no regrets. I've done my part and I think life must continue. I should be the first one to support my MP, who is now Honorable No Masangui. Uh, I should support him because all I wanted is change and improvement in my area, a positive change. Now, if he's ready to do the same, and the people are voted him into power, then why don't I support? Why don't I support? Is, is, is he ready to work with you? Yes, he is ready. He's demonstrated through his statements and his actions. He has invited me to many functions. And actually, we are friends for a long time. It's not just in politics. So when he first came into office, uh, what I did was to hand over. You know, I did my handover notes. I did everything so that he has somewhere to start from. How did you do this handover that you're talking about? I met him uh, in a meeting oh, yeah. in, in his office because he, I visited him as my honorable member of parliament to hand over, to give him notes, so that uh, whenever he wants uh, me, I offered myself that if you, whenever he wants me, I'm available and that uh, the handover notes maybe needed explanation that I did. And from that time on, he has taken that and he's proceeded. I'm happy to say that I've seen some works by him. 
he's already started and i'll be very happy to continue supporting him because all i want is not for him to do so many things but for the people you know as number one to enjoy whatever he wants to do for them i should not be the one uh, to derail all that plans he has for the area how do you look at the sustainability of your relationship with uh, the current member of parliament because uh, he is dpp and you are people's party uh, our approach in the area is such that we have agreed that politics should not derail development work and what i'm doing now is to just do things that will only encourage development work so regardless of our party colors we are supposed to work together in the interest of developing our area we were all born in there him and i have gone up together and uh, we still have a lot of work to do to improve our area so our political colors should not really derail so you were born in blanda i was born in blanda in limbi actually i was born in limbi and i grew up in limbi and i became member of parliament for limbi people say that uh, your decision to dump the democratic progressive party after the death of uh, the late president bingo mtalika cost you that seat as a member of parliament i don't really agree but uh, people are entitled to their own analysis about the electoral results but uh, some schools of thought have different ideas others have said because you already served two terms you know because you should understand that i was first voted into as a member of parliament independent you know there was no party color there i joined dpp i joined pp you know and uh, there will be many uh, schools of thought about it but uh, i i will respect all of them but most importantly is that we should allow people to exercise their democratic right and also they should be able to test another set or another type of leadership like at the moment it's uh, on abono masangwe because if he does something if he um, has got a strategy to develop uh, the area it will be different from mine so if i've done it for the past dean to also do his strategies and then the three strategies or two strategies or many strategies will help us develop so it's a democratic right that people should be able to test all this they should be able to uh, to be saved by any of the sons of the area and um, i feel i've done my part and if, if if they want me again for something else that i'm good at i'm sure they will tell me to come back and why did you join people's party in the first place people's party when it was formed people in my area asked me to join it because uh, initially i was independent and i was asked to work with the government of the day so when did the people ask you to join the people's party they asked me to after the the people was formed mm -hmm. it's when they asked me but you should understand the background that when i was independent they set the principle to work with the government of the day so the principle to work with the government of the day started with dpp from independent i worked with the dpp and from dpp i worked with the dpp you know so it was working with the government of the day for the benefits that comes with that i don't know if you have heard uh, these sentiments people say that uh, you are a politician who never wants to work or to be in opposition do you agree oh yeah 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 true because the principles work with the government so that when we, we want things from government we should easily get it mm -hmm. so this is why i've been very successful because i don't think from my opposition i would have gotten all that as a member of parliament mm -hmm. you know but what i managed to achieve in my area for the people was taken straight from government so for instance if i want to do the road i would go to city assembly and demand it i will get it from government side and uh, to to government department it was easy because you talk to a minister you talk to government officials and you know it was very easy mm -hmm. that's the african way maybe it's abnormal but it's african way it works mm -hmm. it works so you would never work with uh, or you never be in opposition if you decide to go back to politics if i was an mp yes if i was an mp yes so do you regret dumping the democratic progressive party that is back to government now do you regret your decision to dump the party i did not dump the party no you dumped it what is dumping you left it and uh, joined the people's party who is my boss my boss is the people who try to go so maybe they dumped it but i did not dump anyone so do you think these people misled you what is misleading because they know what they want best so that is what they wanted i must do it they are the bosses now they asked you to join people's party and later voted you out of parliament that's why i'm asking you to say do you think they misled you in a way um you should understand that issues about votes is to do with the majority if the majority decides 
what they want. You just respect that. But it doesn't mean that all the people that voted, that cast the vote, were for a particular party. So the group that sent me to do a thing, to move to this particular party, they voted for me. If you look at the analysis, you will see that there were huge votes for the party I represented then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now People's Party is in opposition. Are you still PP? Yes, I'm PP because I would never resigned. Why still remain in People's Party when it's now in opposition? I thought you have just told me that uh, you don't work with the political party that is in opposition. I'm not a member of parliament. But uh, you are surprising me quite. I know you are the deputy spokesperson of the party but um, I can hardly hear you commenting on issues affecting the party. Why this approach? Uh, there is uh, a prominent spokesperson in the name of Kenneth Sonda. He speaks for the party. Why should I also talk for the party? No, but at least you can be assisting him in yes. some issues. Yes. I can assist him on a request because I'm his junior. Mm -hmm. yes. So he never engages you? He does engage me. We call that. But he is a spokesperson. When he's absent is when I can come in. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the party's policy? Yes, yes. We don't want contradictions. Mm -hmm. Yes. You see the parties that all want to talk, uh, sometimes they talk stupid. They talk? Yes. To mean what? Ev everyone wants to talk with their things. But if he's a spokesperson, you respect the spokesperson mm -hmm. and they speak for him. Mm -hmm. But if everybody wants to talk, then disorganization. Mm -hmm. But PP is organized party. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Bande, recently we saw something very rare happening in your constituency. You and your successor together handed over a school block to the Blanta City Council. I'm told you are the one who initiated the project. Issues of uh, development are concerned. It tells us very loudly that in our area, we do not value colors of a party. We value development work. So him, Honorable uh, Norma Sang, invited me to launch a project. I initiated, you know. He, as a member of parliament now, thought it wise that I should be present. He told me to speak, but I said no. He, as a member of parliament, must speak for us. Because it's not a question of talking, it's about doing. So he invited me, I respect that fact, and this is very loud message to the general public that in our area, Blanda City East, it's not about politics, it's about development. And what, what I came to do there is to support my member of parliament, and I will continue to support him, because all I want is our area to continue developing. I'm doing this in the interest of continuity. I started certain things, I did them so well, and I want to give the effort that I must fully do to make sure that Honorable Nora Masangui has the full support from everyone in the area, including myself. Now, apart from uh, this project, what other projects is he continuing that uh, you started when you were a member of parliament for the area? From what I remember, uh, this is the only project he's continuing. Actually, it's launched. Um, if he continues to do certain things on the project, it will be phase two. Because now a junior primary is finalized. Uh, what is important now is for second phase, so it becomes a full, fully fledged uh, primary school. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure he's going to do because he's already started very well. I've seen that. I've seen his works. And uh, he's a dedicated man. And um, I will continue to support him. Because all us in the East are proud of their sons, myself and him. And that we are continuing to work together to ensure continuity. And today in the program, I'm talking to Johnny Bande, former member of parliament for Blantyre City East constituency, who also served as a cabinet minister in the former regimes. Talking about uh, you as uh, a politician and a uh, former member of parliament for the area, I've already said that uh, some people describe you or described you as a model in as far as the parliamentarians are concerned in the country in terms of uh, development in a constituency. Now, tell me, what do you consider to be your main achievement in your area? Um, in the nutshell, I can tell you confidently that I managed to develop or to improve on the education sector. I managed to improve on the uh, infrastructure like roads, you know, dirty road, the maintenance work on the tarmac roads around the constituency. I managed uh, to improve on the um, mission of security, yes, um, by the, the building of uh, police units. I've managed to improve even the secondary education apart from the primary education. So in other ways, 
education yes was improved from primary including school feeding programs and you know further to that the secondary education and um i've also managed to bring discipline in the children in the in the kids mm -hmm. yeah our youth to, to bring discipline yes to to bring discipline in mm -hmm. the in the youth of our area how, how have you achieved that what i've done through engaging them to make them understand that that they are leaders today not tomorrow as it used to be the case before they they understand today that they are they are, they are leaders today and they must perform as leaders and uh, i've also engaged them in sports activities in competitions you know that has helped them to be well disciplined youth you know in the blanda city and um, i've also encouraged the youth to sing you know to be uh, god fearing that i've done through the introduction of choir festivals they have done that uh, for the past three four years and um, that has helped them because some of the activities by our youth that are negative have come because of idleness mm -hmm. yes all right now talking about uh, the future what are your future plans do you intend to reclaim that seat come 2019 at the moment lords i'll tell you honestly that i am on holiday i am uh, on a, a long holiday my concentration at the moment is to make sure that the family has time for me and that uh, i save my church i'm a catholic that I have time for my church but uh, how, how are you saving your change? Uh, I'm now more active in the Mpagati, where I sit there, pray with the people, and I have Kaudindo, you know. You, 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 what I'm trying to say is that before I'll just go to church, and then I have no time, because I have to rush back to Lirongwe. But now I have time. I can sit in a function of the church. I can pray with the people. I can, I, you know, I, um, I just want to give my more time now to religious issues mm -hmm. i can be invited to other churches you know to mosques also to to take do, a do, do you preach um uh, a bit when i'm asked to comment on the bible mm -hmm. i'm not a serious preacher to, to comment on the to bible on the bible verse yes we can discuss uh bible yes i'm happy to do that i don't think you're being honest with me when you say you are on holiday politically because uh, i'm told politicians never go on holiday i, I will surprise many Rose, have you heard me doing any any campaign? Have you heard me being active in in political activities? The answer is no. Yeah, I want the answer is no. Yes, but that doesn't mean you're not standing again in 2019. Um, whether to stand or not in 2019 depends on if my uh, current MP wants to continue in in 2019. Then I'll give him my chance. You you will never stand if he yeah, wants to continue. If he wants to continue, I'll give him my chance. But these people competed with you uh, yes, in the previous elections. If, if, he, if he, I serve two terms, I should also give him a chance to serve two terms. Why this kind of an arrangement? Because uh, you don't belong to the same party. Your People's Party and Masangu is TBB. Why this kind of an arrangement? He could have programs that are longer, but if he decides to continue, I'll, I'll give him a space. But you, you're telling me that uh, you, your friends, what does he say about his political future? Is he standing again in 2019? We, we don't discuss it because now we're concentrating on the development work. Yes, he is busy. He calls me, uh, if, if I still remember where such, such a fire is, who was heading what committee you know what is the background about such piece of land you know he would call me for that information but not yet about standing or not so when, when do you think he would tell you for you to plan very well for the elections uh, whenever he's ready that he wants to stand i'm sure he will tell me because mm -hmm. we are such close friends but we have not discussed the topic standing or not but for me i can already respond now that if he wants to continue two terms like i did then i, I will not stand mm -hmm. you know should, should you decide to to stand in 2019 which party are you going to represent um uh, as i said it, the answer now will depend on whether he's going to stand or not yeah if he decides to stand i will decide what to do but um again i will tell you that uh, all the decisions about standing or not standing uh, for what party or not for a party it really depends on the people that you represent what is their feeling what do they want best mm -hmm. yeah in democracy you want to put the people in front and if the people in front the the people themselves have have uh, they have to say it out mm -hmm. they have to tell you how they want things you know and uh, because they are the voters you have to listen at them and you just have to do that mm -hmm. this is why i made the movement politically is because they they approached me yeah. Yeah. are you not telling me that uh, if masangu is not standing then you will stand on a tbp ticket is it not what i'm getting from you um 
I'm looking at Noah Masango and myself as children of the constituency, regardless of our political parties. So if the current MP has only saved, is only saving his first. I'm saving, I've saved my two. Okay? Now, what I'm saying to you is, if he decides to, to stand, you know, there it doesn't matter which party you stand for in, in our area, as far as you have good programs for the area. So if, if he doesn't stand, it's not necessarily that, therefore, I will stand in his shoes exactly as his party representing it. No. I will stand for the people in the area and in a fashion that the people will design. Let's now talk about the country's state of affairs. As a seasoned politician yourself, what's your assessment of the performance of the DP government so far? Uh, the DPP government at the moment, uh, perhaps to me, is uh, too early to say much. Of course, every government must be assessed at the very end. You know, when they put all the programs together and then the net result is what we can judge them from. At the moment, let's not judge them. Let's give them support. Let's to me let's, let's support them let's pray for them so that their decisions must continue to develop the people in the in malawi so that the people benefit otherwise if we fight with them then we're disturbing them mm -hmm. yes let's make sure that uh, we religious people or malawi populace let's pray for them let's tell them where they have gone wrong for them to correct yeah, and that's what, exactly, that's what exactly I'm asking you to do now. Now, I've, it's too early for me to do that. But at the moment, I can say they are trying. They are trying. But in the absence of donor aid, no government can, can really uh, satisfy you 100%. Mm -hmm. No government will, will satisfy you 100%. Let's ensure that the issues surrounding the donor aid are resolved. How do you think these issues can be resolved? The donors have given conditions. Let's listen to them carefully and try to implement. Issues like that of cash get, you know? Issues of the cash get, many departments are involved in trying to resolve it, like the judiciary, you know, the executive. There must be cooperation between them. If they cooperate, the judiciary do their part, executive does their part, then we'll be quick enough to respond to the donor demands. And once we do that, I'm sure the donors will come forth. Mm -hmm. Yes. In the absence of donor, donor support, uh, no, no government can really uh, perform to the expectations of Malawians, 100%. Mm -hmm. no. M minus donor support, do you see Malawians facing problems than the ones that we are facing now? The problems may continue, yes. The problems in the country may continue because, you know, money is important. Yeah, the social services have to be have to be funded, well funded. Of course, locally, government is, is sourcing money, funds to run its operations, but it's not going to be easy because the, the donor info, you know, stoppage, it has come like sudden. Mm -hmm. You know, it was never planned. You know, it was never planned. The donors decided they were not going to to fund the budget. You know, and um, that's a serious problem. And I can assure you that if there's no solution, Malawians are going to, to suffer. But uh, in future, therefore, it gives us uh, food for thought as Malawians. Should we continue uh, relying on donors like we do now? The answer is no. So we, we, can, we can do without donors? Um, it's not really to say that we can do without donors. I will tell you, we can do without donors, but we have to plan, you know? We have to have an exit strategy from donor budget support mm -hmm. you know we have to plan uh, properly we have to strategize and then we we, we phase them out but uh, even even countries that are well to do than malawi still need donors mm -hmm. so we cannot really say we don't want them and that's not what the government is saying but they have no choice yeah because the donors has, has got this demand but all the government has to do is listen at the demands of the donors and try to sort out the problems that are there so that the donors can come back. And then when they come back, we can strategize to exit. Mm -hmm. As a senior member of uh, the People's Party, are you in contact with the former president, Joyce Banda? No, as I said, I've been on holiday. I have not been in touch with her. I know she's out of the country to do uh, work on the Joyce Banda International. And I know also that she will be coming back from the information that has been uh, public to everyone. If indeed uh, 
she is coming back in October. I think people miss her uh, in our party and that when she comes back people will be very happy. Mm -hmm. Yes. You you miss her as well, isn't oh, it? Oh yeah. I miss her because she's she's like a mother to me. Um just like a late bingo was like a father to me. You know, I really respect the two leaders because number one I was just a small boy when I just joined politics, but uh, President Bingo Mtarika appointed me to be Deputy Minister. And after he died, many people lost their cabinet positions, but I was very lucky to be in a new cabinet of uh, Madam Joyce Banda. That is to say that the two leaders are trusting me, that I was ready to save the nation with dedication. Mm -hmm. yeah. But look now, it was uh, a sign of being ungrateful on your part that uh, you dumped Bingo's party, DBP, soon after his death? Uh, maybe it's just a misunderstanding. If you are asked to serve in a government, should you say no? Should you say no? The answer is you have to serve the government. So it's, it's not possible to say no? You should not refuse appointments if they are done in good faith. Mm -hmm. You know? For instance, I'm asked by the new president, Madam U.S. Banda then, to continue serving as Minister of Trade. Mm -hmm. That means she saw what uh, the late president saw. Do, do, do that think, I was ready. Do, do, do you think she would have done that if you had um, remained in the Democratic Progressive Party? Because to most of us, that happened because uh, you had joined her party. No, 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 no. no. I joined the PP much, much later. Mm -hmm. I was still DPP when she appointed me. Were you saving your job anyway? No, no, no. Um, she was not the type of leaders who would segregate. She's uh, one of the leaders who has put Malawi together. You know, she would appoint people from different backgrounds. You know, wherever you come from, she doesn't because care. At that particular time, we saw a number of individuals appointed as uh, cabinet ministers, people like Chirumpa, people like uh, Uladi Musa, but they all joined people's party. Yeah, but the, you know, again, a choice of where you want to join. You're in Malawi's constitution, you're not limited. You can, you can belong to any any grouping mm -hmm. uh, but you have to listen at what your people are saying those you represent are they saying go ahead but people have remained DPP but still work with Madam mm -hmm. and but sometimes you politicians lie you always say people have asked me to do this when it's not like that all people as far as their persons they, they may lie but not necessarily that uh, all the time a politician is therefore equal to lies no mm -hmm. even bankers civil servants have cheated you know they cut it no 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 for politicians like me do you call me a liar? Mm -hmm. Are you exceptional? I think I am. Let's uh, stop it there and uh, let me thank you very much for your time and uh, whatever you have shared with us in this edition of Capital Straight Talk. Wish you well, Honorable Pandi. Thank you very much, Rose. And this is how we conclude today's edition of the program, Capital Straight Talk. Today in the program, I was talking to John Bande, former minister and member of parliament for Blantyre City East Constituency.